Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're back again with another uh, video. What is, what are we, uh, our, our, our channel is called uh, Prison Liberation and Redemption Program. Prison Liberation and Redemption Program. We're here with John Greshner for Chapter 2. John, go ahead. You're on. Okay, so, all right, thank you. How you doing? How, how's everybody out there? I was like, so check it out. I want to revisit something in Pete Early's book, his recent book, uh, No Human Contact. All right. He said there was an incident at the New Alcatraz of Marion, Illinois, in the control unit, H unit, with Tommy Silverstein, Davey Huey, <clears throat> a gangster, he said, out of uh, Boston. That gangster's name was Wilson. Mm. And he, he said they tried to move on him because he, the Wilson had cussed out a Mexican mafia uh, member. Well, that had happened, but that wasn't a real thing. I was on the tier there, too. Okay, here's what happened. Baby Huey was the tier porter, and we were on D-range. And on D-range, you got the, the chicken wired in cage, the wired cage. Then you got a walkway, like a catwalk, outside it next to the windows. That's where the porter goes to sweep up dust and stuff. And he sweeps up the wreck cage and the regular tear and all that. And the feds, the tears are called ranges. Well, every morning, baby Huey used to go out right around on the walkway, the catwalk out by the windows, right around uh, between 10 and 12 cells. There's 18 cells on the tear. Right. And, he's, and he cranks open the windows. He's got a homemade crank. He cranks open the window. And he saw in the window on. Mm -hmm. there's, gonna be, there's a mass exodus plan. Right. <laughs> Everybody's trying to get the fuck out of there. Right. Well, that particular day, that dude, he, baby Huey says that dude Wilson seen him doing it. It wasn't, but an hour and a half later, the cops ran right to it. Oh, really? It. Oh, no shit. So the word, the word was that Wilson told on that. That's what kicked that shit off. So check it out. There's a guy in the tier, along with them, we're going to call him Quicksilver. Quicksilver's in the back. Right. Tommy Silverstein is like in two or three cell, up near front. If the cops walk on the front of the range and walk over to the corner, they can see everything going on. So there's discussion about getting Wilson. Right. Quicksilver tells Silverstein, listen, man, I'll do the shit in the back. You're too close to the front. The move is... Baby Huey is going to be given a piece. A piece is a knife, right. you know, bang or a knife, a piece of steel. This this one was called Big Boy. Right. It's like twelve to fourteen inches long, two inches wide, a quarter inch thick, sharpened with hacksaws, files, and emery paper, double edged. You could, you could chop holes in concrete with it. <laughs> baby, baby, yeah, call it, you know, typical bone crusher. Bone so crusher, baby yeah. Huey's got that. So, Quicksilver is going to tell Wilson, "Hey, come into my cell area because." These are bars on the front of the cell, but they got the boxcar on the front of that. Right. He's going to tell him, call in, come on in the front of this little vestibule, and then Baby Huey's going to push him up to Quicksilver's bars. Quicksilver's going to wrap a rope around his neck, a rope, start choking him out. Baby Huey's going to pull Big Boy and blow his back out. That's the plan. Well, Tommy doesn't want to go down. No, 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 let me do it. Let me do it. I got this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Against his better judgment, Quicksilver says, okay. Right. Okay, it's the same plan. Okay, here it goes. It's going down. Wilson, Baby Huey, and Tumbleweed are all on wreck together. At that time, in the control unit, three people could be on wreck together. Right. Tumbleweed is not involved in this. He's down on a tier like eight, nine cell in the vestibule talking or something. Tommy, oh, terrible T, that's Silverstein. He calls Wilson. Hey, come here. Let me talk to you. He gets in there. Baby Huey rushes. Wilson pushes him up to the door, slams him into the grill. Tommy wraps the fucking rope around his neck, starts choking him. Baby Huey pulls Big Boy. He actually cut him a little bit, but Wilson's fighting now. And he's struggling to get away from the garrote around his neck and off the bars, and it gets loose, and he starts screaming to the cops. Right. Oh, officer, officer, help me, they're killing me. So now he, he gets loose from uh, Silverstein. And him and Baby Huey are fighting, and they go out of the vest bowl, and they land on the floor in front of the cell. Tumbleweed steps out, sees me. He wasn't even hip it was going down. He goes running down, bing, 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 starts throwing some, some fucking moves on uh, Wilson, Wilson to help uh, baby Huey. Here comes the cops. When the cops come running in, they grab Wilson, dragging him up. 
Baby Huey and Tumble, we get into it with the cops. Baby Huey takes a couple of swipes at the cops with the piece. With the piece? They slam the door. No shit. And, yeah, that's how it really went down. Now, check it out. So, then they're coming walking down the tear, and, and uh, fucking uh, Baby Huey comes up in front of my cell. I'm, like, near down at the back end of the tear. He says, John, what should I do with the piece? I tell him, well, don't <laughs> give it to me. you got, like, 40 cops behind yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, it, and, it, and it's too big, I can't flush it down the shitter, right? So I should throw it in a trash can or something. So they come and wrap up Baby Huey and Tom. We take them down to the back of B-Range, which is disciplinary segregation in HM. Okay, they're down there. They do their little jolt, and they come back up. At that time, the early says in his book that Baby Huey told the cops, get me off the tear, he's going to kill me too. That never happened. I heard okay. that, man. It, okay, so listen. Baby Actually, Huey and Tumbleweed got indicted, a federal indictment for assault on cops for that fucking case. And I read Wilson's FBI 302 investigation form. He told on everybody. He said, they all knew, no, I'm going to kill them. I'm hunting all of them now. Baby Huey did not roll over until a long time later when Tommy killed that first cop. Plus, right. when that was going down, when that was going down, Baby Huey had been smoking weed and he'd been having a little static with tea and some of the fellas down the unit. He thought, because he was on a different range, they were taking the unit over to come and get him. Right. He didn't matter. They weren't trying to do that. He wouldn't have even matter. But he was paranoid. He was smoking that shit, right? That's what led him out of there. Okay, so right after the Wilson incident with Baby Huey trying to do, Baby Huey was doing what he was supposed to do. I went down and talked to Tommy. I told him, okay, what the fuck happened? He said he got loose. I told him, he got loose. How the fuck did he get loose? He says, well, he got loose. I, I couldn't hang on to the rope. I told him, bro, I stuck my hand out. I told him, stick your hand out. He, he, like we're shaking hands. I told him, squeeze my hand. He squeezed. I said, stop fucking around. Squeeze my hand. Really, you know, he said, I am. I said, no. Really hard. Give me everything you got. He said, I am. I told him, that's the fucking problem. You got soft little touchy roll fingers. You couldn't hang on to the fucking roll. <laughs> you know the fucking dude in the back should have did this shit. Not you. Not a dude got away. Quicksilver. That's what really happened. Yeah. Yeah, Quicksilver. So, hey, we're dude. Just gonna, we're, hey, we're just going to call that guy Quicksilver. He's going to remain unnamed. Yeah, right, I know who he is. Well, go ahead. He may, pop, hey, he may pop up during this journey a few different times, but <laughs> will it? But anyhow, that's the real deal on that. That, that didn't go down because the dude cussed out of Do you realize, bro, listen, I'm going to tell you something. I don't know if you know this or not, but that was the story that uh, Tommy told to uh, uh, Pete. Early. He told him. That's not true. You I know, know why would he lie? You know why you know why he probably told him that? To keep the, the, the fact that they were sawing a window out there planning an escape. But that's, he said he said that baby he, Huey screamed for the police and told him all that shit. I mean that's fucking he put a bad jacket on the man. Yeah, yeah, he put a bad jacket on him. And the thing is, is uh much later, okay, you could say something like that, but what they did is they mixed two issues up. But the bottom line is I'm telling you, Baby Huey never did that, man. He never did that, man. Ever. I believe yeah, Baby you. Huey, Baby Huey was always a stand-up guy, man. Yeah, he was. He was a good kid, too. He was a yeah, decent yeah. kid. I always looked out for him. I always looked out for him, took care of him the whole trip. Right? That's why I was surprised when the cops got killed. When Tommy killed Plutz in the morning, then play hit three that night. Baby Huey was already on the third floor in the hospital because he rolled out when Tommy hit <laughs> wow. that one, thinking they're coming to get him, right? Yeah. So so then when Clay hit three more that night, he says, oh, yeah, by the way, oh yeah, the, Ary the Aryan Brotherhood has a conspiracy to kill federal officials. He named Tommy, Clay, Barry Mills, John Grash. Hey, motherfucker, name me. I'm the one that used to look out for him. And he named 240 Shorty, Little Matt. Threw us all in the mix on that. The cops believed that shit until five years later. They came back around. They said, okay, we understand now. You guys really weren't involved in a conspiracy or any of that. This was uh, isolated incidents and all that, right? But Damage already it, done. It, it, the damage was done, man. I was on trial where, where he says I did a public execution in Leavenworth. No, man, I, that that was this guy. Got, I borrowed him from the gambling games. We were running high... Uh, High stakes gambling games, he wasn't paying his debts. So I told him, when you pay your debts, you can come back again. These are honorable games. 
He didn't like it the night before this went down. He was shooting dope up in a cell with Bobby Mills, and he had a, had a piece. And he said, man, I'm going to kill fucking John, and, and we are going to kill John and that Jap he's with. I had Jap, Ronnie Joe, running yeah, the fucking Ronnie Joe, uh, yeah. gambling games. And uh, he said, man, we're going to kill him. So Bobby seen me that morning. At breakfast, he told me, and I said, all right, so I'm off that day. And then the dude, Rhino, that I ended up killing, he was in the hallway. <clears throat> he sent Greg Bono over to my cell block, deep block at 11 one. Tell John I want to see him. I told uh, the Jap, I went and strapped down, the Jap got a plate. <clears throat> <clears throat> we rolled out in the hallway. I told him, what's up, you want to see me? He says, uh, yeah, and that dude come blowing around from the AC side and the big rotunda there where the cell blocks right. are, it, it, into the uh, the stairways that go up to the second and third floor uh, uh, recreation in Leavenworth. Came running around the corner with a knife, tried to hit the Jap, the Jap piped him. Rhino pulled a, knee, a knife, he was on the steps, tried to hit me, I blocked it, he cut me in the leg. I had a knife on my leg. I pulled my knife out, we got in a knife fight, and I killed him in a knife fight. The cops came running up after this was going down. And that's when they said, I actually did a public execution, but it wasn't, we were in a fucking knife fight. And now the cops are throwing trash cans, floor buffers at me, hit me with a what? 55 gallon drum, I'm fighting everything. And a lot of them are in plain clothes. I know we had walked into an ambush. So I ain't turned nut loose. And then the Jap got hit from behind. He chased the motherfucker down the highway, uh, hallway. And it turned out it was a fucking uh, a cop that hit him with a flashlight. And uh, I didn't fucking uh, uh, give my shit up until they got right in front of the mess hall, right? Huh? Was it right in front of the mess hall? No, no. This was right by. You ever been to Leavenworth? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. The double steps that go up to the edge of recreation, the pool halls, and all that, right there. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. right in between those two stairways on each side of the hallway there. That's where it went down. If you were walking from the rotunda going down towards the town hall, right when you're going past the steps, the left-hand side steps right there. That's where Ryan was standing. Right. And he was facing down towards the town hall when I pulled up on him telling him, you want to see me, what's up? And and Ronnie Joe posted up right. to the to his right, and the dude come blowing around the hallway okay. uh, from around the corner, and he had a fucking piece tried to hit Ronnie. Ronnie piped him, bam, 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 knocked him down. And, and Rhino pulled a fucking piece on me, tried to hit me, I blocked it, it hit me in the leg. And I told my shit, we got to fight, man, I'm, you know. So, and the dude later, even in my appeals later, I got a sworn declaration from the streets, from the second guy that was with Rhino that, that morning. He cleaned it up some, oh yeah, I only had pallet knives with me. I didn't have a real knife. He, and people in the streets were telling him, don't do it, don't do it, you're gonna get yourself indicted for murder, right? right. On a conspiracy to commit murder. But he says, no, he says, well, you know, we fuck them guys around. We got to fucking get this shit right, right? So, but like I told you, my jury was out three days. I was my own lawyer. My jury was out three days, tried to find me twice. Not guilty by reason of self-defense, but the judge gave him a bad uh, supplemental and jury instruction when they were in the, the jury box deliberating. He says, I could not basically pre-plan, premeditate for self-defense. When that's when I actually testified to that. So, hey, look at this, that's man. what that's really about. Hey, the no, other day, really somebody hey, so put... So listen, listen to me, listen to me real quick. If we get cut off, there ain't a bunch of people here waiting for the phone. We can do a sec, a third uh, session. Yeah, yeah, all right. I just wanted to tell okay. you this. Um, there's somebody put up a, a video the other day, like within the last week, saying that Barry was a rat, and here's why. They, they said that he told him that... What's his name? Um, what's his name? Ben... Ben, uh, the one that got mur that Sonny Burkett murdered in uh, an I unit. An I unit? Mm -hmm. The rapist. The, the, remember the guy that raped uh, the, the the food. Oh, you talking, talking about Ben Hogan? Uh, oh, Ben Hogan. Remember that? Oh yeah, Ben. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that name. Yeah. Okay, well, Ben Hogan, when he got that, you know what he did, right? He, right. He raped that woman in uh, yeah. in food uh, the food service administrator. Uh, right. Right. And, and he did all kinds of dirty shit to her. He raped her. He killed her. And uh, he's a creep. He's a fucking yeah, creep. He's a car. Yeah. He's a piece of shit. Anyway, he, uh, he you know he took the weight for Barry. He Barry and them told him said, "Listen, you're never getting out. You just raped and murdered a staff member." There's no that you, you're lucky. There's no fucking death penalty right now. You know what I mean? Uh, right. So you're definitely gonna you're going to prison for the rest of your life, and uh, 
there's not going to be any parole for you. Forget it. So you might as well take this body too. And he wrote yeah. a statement. He wrote a statement. So he thought he was going to get into the brotherhood by writing this statement, right? Taking the weight for yeah. the murder for the, uh, uh, what's his name, murder, uh, in the wreck shack. Uh, John Marsloff. Marsloff. He said he was the yeah. one that did it. He said yeah, he well, was check the one. It out. Yeah, we're checking out. They're not, they're not going to go for that because Danny Holliday, who Pete Early says was a brother, he wasn't no brother. Oh. No, Danny Holliday, the, the one that rolled over and test final bear, he wasn't, he wasn't uh, part of that organization. Yeah, well, they did that anyway, just to, you know, to throw some shit in the game, I guess, to get that. Yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. So, well, listen, Barry, Barry got dirty. Barry turned into a dirty motherfucker. He was smutting brothers down, saying they're rats. They weren't rats. And he had personal beefs with them over drugs, money, or politics, trying to get me as a second commissioner to rubber stamp and hit them. I'm not going to do it. I exposed what he was doing. Yeah, and I told him to stay away from that fucking rat, Kevin Roach, out of Boston. But he let Bo Kevin Roach get all the way up underneath him. And seven years later, Kevin Roach rolled over. He's in the witness protection How, right how now. much time did Roach have, anyway? Did who have? Kevin Roach. How much time did he have? He was doing life. He's doing life for murder out of uh, Walpole. Because he was a Boston, Boston uh, Massachusetts State prisoner in the feds. Really? <laughs> okay. Yeah, so, so anyhow... And I, I exposed Barry's shit. We didn't like it. And then uh, he w apparently was telling Kevin Roach shit about me that me and him's beef, me and Barry's beef. And now that's why for, one that, left. for seven years I was hearing that me and him got problems. I kept telling everybody we ain't got problems. Well, I, I, we're going to continue that in one minute. I'm going to call you back. All right, right call now. me right back. All right. All right, all right bye.